Well, welcome everyone. I'm on Twitch, I'm on Facebook Live, and most of you are joining me on YouTube, so thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Mr. Beat, not Mr. Beast. Oh, you're probably picking up that. That's uh, somebody's taking a shower. My daughter's taking a shower, so that's what you're hearing in the background. Uh, as far as what we're doing here tonight, another I know two live streams in one week, that's insane. And the other one was insane in itself. What we're doing here tonight, another... Oh, there it comes. And uh, that was seven hours watching nothing but PragerU videos. Tonight's a lot different. I'm still reacting to stuff, but these are very personal videos. I'm going to watch three videos from a genealogist that has... He's also a YouTuber. His name is Jarrett Ross, and his YouTube channel is uh, called Genie Vlogger. Gina Vlogger? Genie, Genie Vlogger is how you pronounce it, yes. And he reached out to me, uh, what was it, a couple months ago now at this point? And he said, hey, I'm starting a new series where I'm looking at the family trees of YouTubers. And I figured I would reach out to history YouTubers first. And so um, he reached out to a bunch of us. Um, I think it's for, yeah, Sam Arno was his first um, series where he looked at Sam's family tree. He has a Jewish history channel. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with Sam, shout out to Sam. Um, I've known him for a, a while through the internet. He lives in Israel and uh, is a very smart person. And uh, I'm, I guess, the second person he's done this with and more to come. He's basically, it's like that, remember that show... Um, uh, well, there's been multiple shows like it. There was one on PBS, but there was uh, uh, d Who Do You Think You Are, I think is the name of it. Um, so that was like the most famous. And this is essentially what he's doing, but he's doing it better. And he's kind of showing his methodology and the process. And he's he's looking at it from different angles. And it really is like he's just being a de detective, you know. Uh, actually, a, a historian is really what genealogists... Genealogists are historians. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's a history of Mr. Beat tonight, and I don't really get into my genealogy that much. If you watch my channel for a while, you, you know that a couple years ago, I, uh, I shared my DNA results live in a, uh, in a live stream similar to this. Um, and you know, I wasn't really <laughs> too excited to, I was pretty indifferent, honestly, but the more I learn about this stuff, definitely the more, uh, interesting it becomes for me. So um, I have not watched, he's already, okay, so back to Jarrett. Jarrett of Genie Blogger has released three videos already on his channel uh, over the past three weeks, breaking down my, like looking at my DNA, uh, looking at any historical records he could find to build my family tree and just look at my ancestors. And so I have not seen these videos. Uh, I sent, I forwarded them to my parents. They have seen them. Mrs. Beat has seen them. And she's had a hard time keeping secrets from me because apparently there's some pretty like revealing information in there that's exciting. Also, um, <laughs> I like apparently, and there's three more episodes to come. So we're going to do this again here in about three weeks to find out the rest of the story. So this is only part one, actually. Um, Mrs. Beat's going to be joining us later in the live stream as well uh, to kind of give her opinion on this. You know, she's part of my family tree now, too. But so I pulled up episode one. Uh, I encourage you to subscribe to uh, Jarrett's channel. Again, it's Junie Vlogger. And he is actually going to be in the chat um, trying to answer some questions. But if he doesn't get to your questions in the chat because he has to go out and walk his dogs, and do other stuff, you know. He's a busy guy like I am. Um, he will be joining joining me for a short time at the end of my reactions to these videos. Like, I'll watch the videos, and then he'll join me for a, a actual chat to answer any questions you may have. So stick around for a Q&A with him. Uh, if you have questions for me or, or Mrs. Beat as well, she'll be here. I think she might join me here, or she might be upstairs in the living room. I don't know. It's kind of cold in the basement, so... Uh, But thanks for being here. Uh, let's start with this first video. This is, uh, we'll go ahead and go to the. So episode one, 
building family trees using only DNA. So I just gave him my DNA and information. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've only known Jarrett for a couple months, but I trust him with my DNA. Okay, so I have never seen these before. I did. I, I went ahead and liked the video anyways, uh, because, you know. Um, oh, before we get started, thanks for the super chat, Risotto. Uh, who's the worst mayor of any major U.S. city in history? Oh, boy, what a big question that is. I think we're going to have to make a video about to answer that question. <laughs> but thanks for bringing that to my attention and for the uh, donation there. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started with this. Hello, everybody. I am Jared Rossagini, vlogger, and on today's vlog... I will be building Mr. Beat's family tree using only his DNA results. I think that's his actual band. That's what Mrs. Beat was telling me. I have to ask him. That music is his band. Hello, everybody. Welcome to season two of my new series, YouTuber Family Trees. On the first season, we looked into Sam Arano's family tree which I'm going to be linking up above somewhere, the playlist where you can watch that if you haven't yet. But on this season, we're going to be looking at Mr. Beats. I am just a guy of whom several refer to as Mr. Beats. Family tree, <laughs> and we're only going to be using DNA. Mr. Beat is an educational YouTuber <laughs> who focuses on That's videos nice. about history, politics, geography, and other subjects related to the fact... I teach seventh grade social studies, and I love it. When I first emailed him, I was a bit worried that he might not be interested based on his DNA results video. A day or so ago, I was like, you know, it'd be fun to reveal those live on the air and oh. kind of talk a little bit about. That's this is the this is the live stream I was referencing. Yeah, that's from a couple of years ago. That's... Uh, you know what genealogy even means. Um, before I look at my own results. And some of you have been already guessing what my <laughs> genealogy is in the chat, and that's wonderful. I am not necessarily that excited to see this. In fact, I couldn't care less. Um, I consider myself an American. I consider myself a human. I am a human. I'm not another species. I just <laughs> what a, don't who is care. this guy? Like I, I, it does fascinate me a little bit how much people focus on their dead relatives, like and how much that means to them to their identity. I've always been fascinated by it, but it never personal. Like I just don't. These people died a long time ago. But I was very happy to see that he quickly <laughs> responded that he was interested. <laughs> now, for a lot of people that don't really know much about me, I actually work as the lead forensic genetic genealogist at DNA Labs International. And my job consists of taking DNA results from violent cases or unknown remains, and then using genetic genealogy to identify who the person was. So sometimes I'm identifying violent perpetrators, and sometimes I'm identifying unknown remains. And this is really new in forensic science, and this is something that a lot of people don't know a lot about, but they hear a whole lot about it because so many cases are... are now being solved using it. So this series is going to give you a very detailed look of what actually goes on in these types of cases when it comes to the genetic genealogy. I had no idea that he did that type of genealogy. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh hopefully he's he's not finding any dark secrets of not only my past but my ancestors passed. One of the biggest things I see that people say when they're not sure of how to think about this stuff is, well, what does law enforcement get to see? What do the people doing this work get to see? A lot of people have some very realistic and reasonable um, worries about government having more access to more information about people. So on this series, you're going to get to see what do we actually see when we do these law enforcement cases looking for violent perpetrators and trying to identify unknown remains. So on this series, I'm actually going to be limiting myself to what we get. So a lot of people know about databases like Ancestry, MyHeritage, 23andMe, Family Tree DNA. then there's stuff like GEDmatch and a whole bunch of other websites as well. But when it comes to... Yeah, just... Uh... Uh, you know, when I, I've logged on to Ancestry.com uh, 
a handful of times since I um, spit in the tube and sent my DNA in and all and revealed the countries where I'm from. Uh, and not a whole lot of my relatives actually are registered on that site. I, only a couple of my cousins are, and I have a lot of cousins. Um, I have a, and first cousins. I have probably like 50 something first cousins. And so, yes, big uh, Catholic family. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but not a lot of people, like not a lot of my family, like I, I couldn't convince my my own parents to, to, you know, spit in the tube. And I guess they were, it was kind of expensive, but uh, CFH or Orbit Shorts, uh, thank you for the super chat. My ancestors knew William Penn. One was a Quaker founding member. Look him up. His name was George Keith. My last name is Keith. Right on, right on. Uh, okay, so back to the video. Forensic genetic genealogy, or what's also known as investigative genetic genealogy, we are limited to basically two databases, technically three. The two main databases are Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch. And then technically there's this third website called MitoYDNA, which does mitochondrial and Y chromosome DNA. But most of the time we're using Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch. So that is what I'm going to be limiting myself to. Now, Mr. Beat actually tested originally on Ancestry. So I had to make sure not to look at his results and to go ahead and upload mm -hmm. that to Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch. Now, one other thing that I'm keeping in mind too is that, you know, I already know his name is Mr. Beat. I know he's Matt Beat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that into consideration as something that we already would know for a case, which sometimes in some cases, we do have names or surnames that are possibly connected to the DNA that we're working on. Yeah. Uh... So if you're wondering if Mr. Beast is my son, uh, I think we're going to quickly learn tonight that, that that's not the case. Uh, so sometimes maybe in Doe cases, there may be some possible presumed names that the person might be. So we're keeping those in mind when we look at things. There's also the possibility that sometimes uh, when doing DNA cases, someone has done a Y DNA search or a surname search and identified possible surnames within the family. So because it'd be very difficult for me to ignore any matches that might have the beat name in their family tree, we're just going to assume that for whatever reason, we already have the name beat as a possible name for the DNA results. So the first thing that we do is we wanna look at the DNA matches to really see how good are the matches. If the matches that we have are really, really low, we may not be able to figure this out. If we have matches that are very, very high, we may be able to figure out in almost no time. For Matt, his was actually right in the middle. Hmm. We had some decent matches, mostly right around the 150s. And then we had a lot below that, but nothing really above that. I will say literally just yesterday before I started, uh, you know, getting ready to film, we did get a new match who was 327 centimorgans. Um, and so <laughs> I actually did kind of, add her into uh, the other information that we, we did build already. So we wow. have some really good matches. And as I mentioned, we had one new match that popped up yesterday. We can see that Wonder it who that was. says new. <laughs> and this is the highest match. And Okay, so it only says first cousin to third cousin, second cousin to third cousin. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm talking about not many of my relatives have, um, you know, actually done the the ancestry.com or 23andme.com spit tube thing uh that's first cousins and uncles and aunts and parents and grandparents uh, second cousins I, I do think there's a lot more out there third cousins definitely too so i'm um, so i was a little surprised to hear that i'm kind of in the medium range we're getting 327 centimorgans longest block of 50 cent uh centimorgans which is really significant and then they uh, are estimated. Sent to Morgan's. Going to have to ask what that means. Uh, sent to it's a, a sent to Morgan is a unit used to measure genetic linkage. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Uh, just had to look that up. Estimating about a first to third cousin. And that could range. So when we hover over it, you can see that it even pops up first or third cousin, could be a great half uncle, aunt, niece, nephew, 
or great grandparent or grandchild uh, relation. So one thing that we do want to do is we want to basically split everything into clusters. And there are a few ways to do that. One way is you can connect these results to a website known as genetic affairs. We can also do what's known as the leads method, which is basically color coding different matches based on how their shared matches are to you as well or to the DNA that you're processing. And once we break it into clusters, then the assumption is that each cluster is going to have one shared ancestor that then Mr. Beat would also descend from. Another thing to note is that because Mr. Beat is male, we know that any matches that share X chromosome DNA with him have to be through his mother's side because he only inherited X chromosome DNA uh, from his mother. And instead of an X, he got Y chromosome from his father. So when we look at <laughs> the top matches, okay. the second top match is actually 58 centimorgan match on the X chromosome. And that is significant. So we know that this match at the very least is coming through not just his mom's line, but we can say through the X chromosome related paths. And the basic idea of it is through knowing how the X chromosome is inherited, you can then rule out certain branches of the tree. So like we just ruled out Matt's father. Well, it'll be through his mother's side and it could be through his mother's father or his mother's mother. But for his maternal grandfather, we know that it's not going to be through his maternal grandfather's father's side. It's going to be through his oh. maternal grandfather's mother's side. So it lets you rule out separate branches. And in going through the information on Jed match, a lot of the matches were actually the same people. There were a few others who weren't the same, um, but they were run by the people who were running matches who were already on Family Tree DNA. Okay. Uh, thank you, Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> Bonjour, Mr. Beat, for the super chat. Yeah, if you just joined us, um, I'm watching... Uh, three, the three first episodes of the second season of uh, Building YouTuber Family Trees uh, from Jarrett Ross of Genie Vlogger. And he's really breaking down the process here of uh, DNA, basically um, taking a bunch of DNA um, data and narrowing it down <laughs> but this is really in the weeds here to be honest a lot of this is over my head so if you're confused now um he might be in the chat here soon so uh if you have questions you can ask in the chat or save them for when he joins us after these videos he's going to be here in real life well not real life but you know he'll be uh actually chatting with me um so save your questions is what i'm, I'm trying to say <laughs> so there's not going to be a whole lot different that we're going to be able to use from Jed match necessarily, but it could possibly be helpful just because we don't know which match might be on there and have great information with all of the matches on Jed match, his top matches, none of them supplied a family tree. That's what this column is mm. except for down here, which is the not very close 47 mm. centimorgans um, shared DNA with a 19.6 centimorgan segment. So basically we're looking at pretty distant relation. And so that's going to be a really difficult one to be helpful. So for Jed match, we're not really getting as much as we are with family tree DNA. And this is something that we deal with commonly with a lot of cases. I often find family tree DNA um, usually has the better matches, but not always. There have been a few cases I've done where, you know, we had good matches on family tree DNA, but the one match that connected everything was on Jed match. So in taking our top seven uh, highest DNA matches. We have 327, 164, 160, 156, 151, 142, and 113. And then we do have others that are close, right under 100, but we're just going to keep it kind of simple. So from all of these DNA matches, trying to split them into clusters, it's split up actually fairly easily. We have one cluster of five. We have another cluster of one and another cluster of one. So our five includes that 327 centimorgan match. So we know that's going to be the first family we want to focus on because as soon as we figure out the family, we'll be able to create a what are the odds tree, which we're going to jump into very soon. Then once we do that, we'll <laughs> want to look at the other clusters because we'll want to see more distant matches they have and see can we identify 
surnames that are common among those families, because if we can, then we'll want to focus on that. So starting out, we're going to take that first cluster and on family tree DNA, luckily we have people that have supplied family trees for us. So you click that button to see their family tree. And uh, that's not the um, cluster we're talking about. This one is the cluster that we're talking about. So when we click this family tree, the family tree comes up. And so here we have the family tree comes up. Now we're starting to see some names uh, for the first time. <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to happen. Uh, I will say it just thinking through, I mean, man, what a, a tedious process. It, it takes a lot. And I want to also add that I think his job just, you would assume, just continues to get easier the more people submit their information. Because I imagine doing this, being a genealogist even five years ago was, you know, it was a lot less to work with. So, but yeah, it's interesting that he's he's doing it this way, using only DNA. This is crazy to me. And we get a whole bunch of names, but we know for this match going back, this match is 160 centimorgans. So about a second to third cousin relation. So going back to this family tree. Um, By the way, I only recognize one of the names, the last names uh, on this part here. So that, and I, that would be Leapst. Uh Leapst is a, uh, my uh, great great grandma's uh, great grand great grandparents' name. Uh, so that's the only name that I recognize. A second cousin means that you share great grandparents. Third cousin means you share second great grandparents. So we would hope that the family tree is traced out to second great grandparents. So there's a possibility that one of these couples, listed here is going to be an ancestor couple of Mr. Beat. So we have these couples, uh, Brown and Hill, Leapst and Rogers, Moorhead and Ogle, and Barnes and Liggett. Then we go back and we look at, do the other ones supply a family tree as well? And one of them do, the lowest one at the 113. So we're going to pull up what family tree she has. And so when we look at this family tree, we need to see, is there anything matching and well, look at that. We do. We have that Leapst and <laughs> Rogers family again. Okay. So Leapst, Rogers. We have Casper, Erasmus, Leapst, and Nepi, yep. Luberta, Rogers. And we look over here and it's the same couple. And so we see that one is descending from their child, Ethel. The other is descending from their child, Margaret. So now we have identified the ancestors of this cluster. The other members of this cluster didn't supply family trees through this but now that we have this family tree we're going to build it out and we're going to see can we identify those people so here we have a basic family tree we know that mr beat is matching a descendant of margaret and mr beat is matching a descendant of ethel yep and they are the children of casper and Nepi. so the main thing we're going to do now is now we're actually going to be building the family tree down not up and by down, we mean we're going to look at Margaret and Ethel's siblings, their children, their nephews, their grandchildren, and we're going to build that hmm. down. Part of what we're doing is as we build down, we want to try to see, can we identify the other names that are matching and see how they're connected? And as I discussed in the last season, when it comes to doing work in the family trees, especially like ancestry, my heritage, ones where they give you hints and stuff, the best way to do it is first you start with the hints then you go into searching if needed, and then you go into researching. Luckily, mm. in the modern day of age, we can do that and get very far. Whereas in the past, you didn't you didn't really even have the internet. You had to go to libraries, family history centers, pull out microfilm, microfiche, mm -hmm. go through things one by one, open up old books, go through all of that. That is still common in today's genealogy, but not as much. And especially when it comes mm. to genetic genealogy, we have to do what's called building quick and dirty trees. Now, by quick and dirty trees... Okay, I'm it's about to get PG-13 here, quick and dirty. Uh, so get, take the kids to bed. Uh, if you're just joining me, uh, I know that the name of this video is, Am I Related to Presidents? I think that comes in episode three. So it's kind of a slow start here. He's going through the nitty gritty just only using using DNA. We're finally starting to see names. And yes, Leapst, I am. The Leaps uh, go as far 
uh, down for me is my great grandparents. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, um, that that's all coming. Remember, uh, there's two more episodes after this. I mean that we're going to try to build these trees using other trees in ancestry. Oh, okay. Now, when that wasn't so dirty. True research. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to just add other information that people have built out. You want to verify uh -huh. it before adding because they it could in. Be and while we will up. be going through and verifying things as best as we can, we want to do it quick because when it comes to this kind of research, you have to build a lot of family trees and find the connections between them. And so being a little loose with it is sometimes <laughs> not a bad idea. So we're going to jump into that and we're just going to go right into, we have the ancestry hints and we're going to look at other people's trees. And there's a whole lot. We have all these photos. Mm. So we know that we are dealing with people that know this family, are descended from this family. And another thing is we can look at the family trees and see, are any of the trees on ancestry with these people, do they have the same names of the matches in our cluster that we don't know how they're connected? Because if they do then we can look at that and assume that is the same match and then we know how they're connected. So looking through these matches, we have a whole lot of stuff and none of these names actually match the names in the family tree DNA or Jed match list. But what we can do is we can Kansas. then go through and start adding everything in. Um, so what Medicine I'll do, Lodge. I'll choose all three of them. And I noticed that... Hmm. Uh, two of them have the same picture and one has a different one. So that's telling me that we're probably dealing with actual descendants, not necessarily tangentially related people, um, which doesn't really change the veracity of the tree necessarily, but it can, can give a bit more confidence sometimes, especially when you're dealing with closer relations where you would assume the people that are making the trees actually knew the people that we're, we're putting in uh, this information from. So <laughs> we're just adding in all of this information um, for the most part, trying to kind of leave the names out of it. And, you know, quick and dirty, we're just kind of adding it in. <laughs> One thing we do want to remember though, is, you know, if we think that we don't have a person in here, you know, when it says, you know, if we're going to add it, it's adding a whole new person. We want to make sure, is this a new person or not? Cause we do have a sibling, Margaret, so we want to make sure when we get is or if we see another Margaret, we don't want to duplicate it. And then it makes things a little bit more difficult. So there we go. Margaret, she's already in there. Wow. They have a whole lot of information. Definitely going to add that in. So this is going to be just so a now rough we're, tree. We're starting to build this tree. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to build that family tree out and down. And we just do this trying to get every single branch of the family that descends from that couple that we identified. I believe uh, the names were Casper and Neppy. There we go. They popped up. So let's go back to the tree. And so now we have a whole lot more. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to build all of this out because the presumption is Mr. Beat descends from Casper and Neppy. Now I already did a lot of this work. And once you do the work and you identify all those people, you can do what's known as creating a what are the odds trade. This is a tool that was created hmm. by a genetic genealogist named Leah Larkin. It's hosted on DNA Painter. What are the odds is a tool where you can put in multiple matches from one family tree building out the tree and then get a better idea of where is the person that's matching all of those family members where are they located within that same family tree so here we have the family tree that i've created and i'm just going to point out a few things this is using the version 2 tool the version 2 tool is the newest one and basically that allows a little bit more going on the calculations are a little different and then you can also enter birth years, which will change how the hypothesis is created. So I just put in Mr. B Leapst Rogers because we know that, you know, both Casper Leapst and Neppy Rogers. But there is the possibility maybe it's from more distant than that. Entering the birth year 1981, which I do know if, uh, if you go to uh, Mr. Beats. I don't know <sighs> if he has a Wikipedia, but he has a Wikitubia. And I, I, I think that's where I got it. Yeah. Um, so we put that in and then we put in all of the children. And now I've already put in the hypothesis, uh, done suggested hypothesis. But 
I'm going to go through, let's, uh, let's delete some of this stuff and we're going to redo that, uh, suggest hypothesis. Okay. So now I've deleted all of that kind of extraneous yeah, stuff. Uh, and this okay. is the base of what I've built. So we ended up <laughs> having six matches in total, one of whom came from Jed match. And this is how they all fit in. So I just went in, I went through, I entered in the information. I put birth and death dates because that will be important in determining where does he fit in this family tree? And once you put that in, um, you know, you just put it, just hover over and this stuff pops up and you can add in details for the birth years, death years, all of that. Uh, if you've had it and I've left out some just because of uh, privacy I, and I'm, I'm going to be saying that a lot through these <laughs> series. So we have all of this. Yeah. And now what we do is we suggest hypothesis. And that's the beauty of the version two tool, um, because it basically just enters in everything for you. And then I'll go through and clean it up. So we do suggest hypothesis. And boy, does it give us a whole lot. So um, wow, one thing a... that I don't like is it will enter in the about for a lot of uh, previous ones, even if you already have certain information. So I'll go through sometimes and kind of clear it out. So from here, I kind of want to analyze what's likely, what's not, what can we clean up to get a better idea of what's going on in this what are the odds analysis. But thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did. All right. So that was episode one. Uh, again, there are going to be a total of at least six, if not seven episodes uh, this season, all about me for some reason. Um, so before we watch episode two, I just remembered I got to thank Jarrett for doing all of this. Uh, I know that this is stuff he's passionate about and enjoys, but uh, this is a lot of work on his end. I'm just thankful that the, there are these tools out there now that help him um, a little bit better. Like compared just to even a few years ago, I imagine this would have been a lot more work a few years ago. So we're going to watch episode two. Um, and if you just join me in the chat here, uh, we're just reacting. I mean, so far it hasn't been too exciting, um, but we're reacting to uh, Jarrett Ross, Genie Vlogger, um, on his YouTube channel. He's been building my family tree, and he's released the first three episodes. Um, and so now we're going to watch episode two. Um, if you have questions for Jarrett, he'll be joining us after I watch these. So stick around, make sure you remember. Your, and he's should be in the chat, too. I haven't seen him in the chat yet, but. All right. Episode two. Did I like it already? Yes, I did. Somebody disliked it. Find that person, hunt them down, and ask them why they dislike this video, because I am personally offended. Okay. Ready? Episode two, using only DNA. Uh, oh, he's still only using DNA. Man, what a champ. Hello, everybody. I am Jared Ross, the genie vlogger. And on today's vlog, I will be building Mr. Beat's family tree using only his DNA results. Thanks, insert alias here. Taft 1912, Taft for the win. Through the competition so uh, now how yeah go taft what's the best way to go because basically what we're using this for is where are we gonna expect matt to show up in this family tree so from here i kind of want to analyze what's likely what's not what can we clean up to get a better idea of what's going on in this what are the odds analysis so starting out we're looking up here at the top and honestly i don't think there's any way that mr b could be born here if you know, we're looking at 1907 here. This could be, you know, or mm -hmm. let's see, we we know when Casper and Nepi were born. So 1861, 1870. So we go back. So 1861, 1870 was when they were born. So that parent would be well before 1857. So you can see how that about <laughs> isn't very good all the time. Or not very good, but isn't always correct. They so were four we're years old when he had them. So we're looking, this one's probably more like 1840s, maybe. Maybe early 1850s, if it's through <laughs> Neppy's side. Um, so then their kit, it, it's just doubtful that either of these. So we're going to take both of these out. So that's clean that up. And I'm going to delete just this person. When you've got one of those, make sure you click delete just this person otherwise it'll delete everything and then you have to start over so now it's already Ooh. looking a lot cleaner now we determine do i think it's gonna do i think it's gonna be through here 
Now I should know, note, some people may notice it says unknown sibling and an unknown half sibling. So what it does is it actually has the ability to determine half siblings. So what we're going to do actually, just to make sure that it's, it knows that that's what we're saying and it's actually going to color code it. We define half siblings. And well, this one, the half sibling is a half sibling to the full sibling. So we do that and we see purple and yellow, both of them purple. That just kind of color codes. It makes it a little easier. But the question is, do I think someone born in 1981 could fit here, here in any of these hypothesized spots? Personally, I really don't think so. Um, you know, even assuming, let's say one of these is a sibling of theirs that was born in like 1880 um, or even 1890. Let's say they had a kid who had a kid when they were 40. So let's say every 40 years for a generation. So 1890. 1940, 1980. Okay, it's a stretch, mm -hmm. but it's a possibility. So we'll just leave it in there because it is a possibility. Um, but then we have all of the other ones added in, and now we want to go to clean up the more recent generations. Now, do I think that there's someone all the way down here? I know the ages of these people. There's no way that Matt was born over here. So we're just going to delete that. And that's to, to read all that. Could it be that there's some sort of unknown half sibling that uh, Matt would then descend from? Maybe, uh, you know, 1907. <laughs> I forgot when her first children were born. We had a, I have a lot of information on them. And so, you know, maybe if when she was really young, she did. So let's say, you know, some kid born 1924. Uh, when she was 17, then maybe 20, you know, so, okay. Yeah, I could, it's possible, but it, it's kind of a, it's basically a lot of generations having children very young. So very doubtful. He descends from Margaret Helen, but it's possible. So we'll leave that up. Then same thing for Ethel right here. No way that he's all the way down here, knowing how old all of these people are. Um, so yes. delete Lots that of process of elimina but elimination with the other here. possibility just like over here um well this one we can delete we know that <laughs> but same with the half sibling so more like if there is a half if he does descend from either margaret or ethel looks like it's more likely going to be margaret but not much and that actually brings me to say when we're looking at the scores in Watto. This does not necessarily mean that, you know, when you have a score of 14 and a score of 11 that, oh, yeah, this one's way more than score than hypothesis two. It really is negligible. The best way to look at it is the next best score should be about 20 times stronger than the previous score. And anything less than that, it's, you know, there is a bit more confidence, but the confidence isn't really that much stronger. So I know a lot of people can kind of misread that when it comes to this. Um, so that's one thing I do want to mention with it. We're looking here too. We have an unknown sibling for Ethel could likely be through here. This would definitely make sense. Um, unknown half sibling, same thing. And then we're keeping this. So now how do we determine what's the best way to go? Because basically what we're using this for is where are we going to expect Matt to show up in this family tree? The best way to look at it, in my opinion, is first we determine what's the most likely generation that Matt was born into, or sometimes what are the two most likely generations. So knowing the ages of the family tree, most of these folks were born born in the late 1800s, early 1900s. That's not my most generation. This generation was born, I think it was about 1920s to 1940s. Plus, Most of this generation yeah. was born like 1960s so, to 1980s. Generation. And then this mm. generation would probably be, you know, depending on whatever we're looking at, maybe in like 1980s to 2000s. So Mr. Beat's going to probably be in one of these generations. More than likely, I think he's going to be descending from one of the siblings of Margaret and Ethel. And even more than likely, he's probably going to be a great grandchild of that child of Casper and Nep. <laughs> so that means we're going to want to build out those this is impressive. The siblings and build them down to their great grandchildren. And then that gives us the best possibility. Of all right. Do I need to yell at some clusters. people here? So now that we've built this, you all behave in the chat. You're gonna, I'm going to give you detention here. Okay. You need to figure it out. 
and the chat. Whoever's spamming. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, he's doing a good job here, like not having much information to go off of, by the way. Cluster, and I've gone through and I've already went ahead and built the family tree uh, using this. I'm not going to show that because there's just too much stuff I've had to, I'd have to make private. Now we're going to look at another cluster. And for the other cluster, I ended up finding that there weren't any very close relations. Um, but I should note that this is the match. This cluster has the match that has the X match. So we know ah. the relation is through X chromosome related lines. And I found that there were a few other matches <laughs> matching this same person that shared the family name of Schmidt. And what I also noticed was that that Schmidt name in that case uh, for this match, as well as the other matches, which shared X chromosome DNA as well, they were all through lines. We should expect a match if someone is sharing X chromosome DNA. But being that this one match that's 164 centimorgans is the only one that's significant. The next closest one, I think, was about 30 something, 27 centimorgans, because we'll have it in the water tray. And um, that one is just super distant. So we're very likely going to be looking at this 164 centimorgan matches tree. So he's corroborating. This is what historians do. This is what journalists do. And this is what genealogists do. You know, you're using different methods to see if there's some overlap. Um, and so far, it's looking like he's on the right track. Uh, much more closely. But we're going to see, can we connect it to those other trees with that Schmidt name? We saw the Schmidt name a couple of times, but can we connect them all to the same family? So for that type of research, instead of trying to trace the family tree down at first, we're first going to try to trace the family tree up on both of those matches. See, can we find a connection? And I was able to do that. And then from that, I was I created a what are the odds tree. Here we have the tree. And basically what I found was that both uh, these matches, one that's 27 centimorgans, so another that's 164, both of them descend from Jacob Schmidt and Anna Metz. Uh, the close one descending from Jacob and Anna's son, John or Johan, and then uh, the other match coming from Cornelius. So doing the typical thing we did before with the other Watto tree and then doing the hypothesis, we get a lot more options. And in all honesty, Mr. Beat could fall into any of these hypotheses that have the green it's any of them are possible same thing with the other one um but here you can see we have a lot more hypotheses so we want to do the same thing though <laughs> i've always wanted to be hypothetical we first determine what's the most likely generation so kind of figuring out like the left to right what's the most likely and then we kind of figure the up or down basically which line do we think it's most likely from so when we look at this generationally I think that Matt would most likely fall probably somewhere in this generation uh, or this generation. So then looking at the highest hypotheses out of those two, those two, we're getting them right here. So basically one hypothesis is that it's a, another child of Eugene. So a sibling of Pauline is who Matt descends from. The other is that Matt actually descends from Pauline but that would be through a child <laughs> she had who was a different with a different sibling. man than would be with Lillian. So do we think that that is the, mm -hmm. a possibility, the unknown half sibling ship? It's possible. Paper trail seems to indicate that she didn't have any other children with any other people. But of course, the paper trail isn't always right. And DNA has proven that over and over and over. So I'm going to focus on this <laughs> hypothesis 16. I think that Matt descends from Eugene. So what are we going to do from here now? We're going to... Well, I don't know. But my, uh, my new album by Electric Needle Room is going to be called Hypothesis 16. Focus on building that family tree for Eugene. So we have the match, Lillian and Pauline. We're going to go back to Ancestry. We know the father is Eugene. So we're going to put in Eugene Schmidt. And we're going to do the typical stuff we were doing with all of the hints and just kind of building it out, but we're also building it down. And, of course, we get all these lovely photos 
and we you know saving them is great because then it's going to show up on your tree um i don't know if matt or any of his close family members have seen these photos but you can <laughs> see that no a i lot have of not people have cool photos and this is one of the cool things about doing genealogy in this day and age people can share their photos and then those photos um, are available for all sorts of other family members i will say there is some controversy with that though in the fact that a lot of people aren't necessarily the happiest of others copying their photos into their family trees or sharing their photos on other websites or you know all sorts of other <laughs> stuff um unfortunately not any generation younger than me they don't care it's all out there when it comes to the true copyright of things people have once you put that up people have the legal ability to do that mm. um just because copyright has to you know copyright law for a lot of these photos puts it in the public domain for anyone who, usually it's 100 years by the way who wants to learn more about copyright law especially in terms of genealogy and stuff i highly suggest looking up a talk uh, from Janice Sellers. I don't know what it's called, but she has a great um, explanation of how it all works and when you're taking risks and when you have, you know, legal rights. Oh, 120 stuff years. And all that. We're not going to focus on that anymore. We're going to look at the records and tracing it down. So we have Find a Grave in the last season. We looked at Find a Grave. I've been on that site several times, actually. It's a good site. Find a Grave. And it's a great, uh, great place for, for lots of information. And wow, look at all of that. So we build all of that out. <laughs> Big family. Say yes, and we add all Pretty of that in. Back then. And boy, is that a lot. Now, remember, we are still doing quick and dirty trees. We're not necessarily verifying it. But one thing to remember when doing this kind of work is that when you are verifying stuff, the context of where things are coming from will have a change in what you can trust about it. So knowing that it's coming from find a grave, often find a grave is very trustworthy because most of the time there's an actual gravestone or a record <laughs> or something for yeah. why that was created. Not always. And so when you do have find a grave information or records, you still want to still want to verify it when you're trying to have a true family tree but when we're doing these quick and dirty trees, obviously it's just kind of add and add and add as much as you can and build it out, see if you can find those connections. So really what we're doing here, we have that family tree built out for that first cluster. Now we're focusing on the second cluster with the Schmidt family. I think that they descend from Eugene. And so building Russia. out Eugene's family, building it down, we're going to try to see, can we find a place where... Yeah, I we don't talk about our Russian... Uh... Uh, ancestry in my family but this this schmidt guy is from russia um that's if you, in case you didn't see that <laughs> there is a marriage between the schmidt uh the schmidt family and a marriage between that leaps rogers family and out of all of these children of eugene and mary i noticed a name that i had actually found in the family tree for the other cluster and that was the name of roush Oh, now it's coming up as her last name. Ralph. So this is uh, an important name. This is my mother's maiden name and my grandparents uh, name, uh, last name. And lots of my uh, aunts and or, uh, my I'm sorry, my uncle's names. Roush instead of oh, yeah, aunts too. Which usually in ancestry, you put the birth name or the maiden name or whatever you want to call it. And here I just got to say, it's amazing. Like he, he mentioned the paper trail, but like so far he has not relied on a paper trail. He later confirmed that, but he's just going off of DNA and he gets to Roush just from DNA. That's pretty impressive to me. You know that her father is Schmidt her. And so we would expect her to be a Schmidt. So we can assume that her husband is a also that town Sharon uh, you see up there. It, that's a very small town. Pretty much, if you live in Sharon, Kansas, I'm probably related to you um, because a lot of my my distant relatives uh, still live in that town, and I've been to reunions there. And yeah, shout out to Sharon, Kansas. Roush, and she was a Schmidt. And when we pull up the hints, we're going to see that's basically the case. Um, all we have to do is we have to find the right record that lists that she's a Schmidt. Did I pass it already? Here we go. So here is how we know that she is a Schmidt. So we see Stella M. Rausch. Now this is a great record set, U.S. Social Security mm. Index. 
A lot of people I think are blown away by this because, hey, look, it's her social security number, privacy concerns. <laughs> but in reality, um, for anyone who knows how the social security system works, there really isn't any fear once once you've passed away, your social security number becomes public. And this is actually yeah. a great record set because often this gives family names and we see, hey, Stella M. Rausch, Father Eugene Schmidt. Go ahead and try Mary using Kaplan, that dead person's no social her. security number. So yes, we're going to say yes. We're going to change her name to Rausch or not Rausch. Sorry, we're going to change it to Schmidt. And we see it's an option. We know that's her birth name. Uh, September. 20th. Oh, by the way, my social security number is 29th. Uh, just that kidding. matches up. I'm not going to change it. It's different just because of the um, location. Does same. So we're just going to do quick ads in for this. Boom, boom. Oh, I did want to change uh, the mother's name to Kaplan, but we're not going to worry about that. So we have that added in. We know that her husband is Roush. So we're going to want to go ahead and find records with Roush. And her husband as well as their children so and then okay there we go 1940 census perfect and it looks like we have a stella her husband is theodore i think he was <laughs> in the uh in the last census so we're yeah gonna... starting to recognize some names here uh definitely recognize those names let me go back a little bit yeah so delmer roush is my grandpa seven years old at the time that would have been 1935 1939 he was born in 1932 so yeah this would have been 1939 stella her husband is theodore i think he was in the uh in the last census so yeah theodore would have been uh, my great grandfather i believe oh we're gonna say yes add in all of this lovely information and now here are their children there's my grandpa so get all of those children added in now from my here having added all of this in i was able to actually confirm that one of these children married one of the children from the Leapst family tree. Uh, they did. So now we have that marriage, that marriage between two separate clusters. That would be my grandma and grandpa Roush, who are both still alive. Shout out to grandma and grandpa Roush. And from that, we know that Mr. Beat must descend from this marriage. So Mr. I Beat do. must descend from it. Now, out of the sake of privacy, I was able to confirm not only did he descend from that, but yep. that uh, Stella Schmidt, who we're looking at now, and Theodore Rausch are his great-grandparents. So one of these children is his grandparent. And yes. then for the other part of the tree, um, we're going to take a quick look and go back. Hey, uh, can we turn the air conditioner off? chance <laughs> you hear the <laughs> thank you um yeah getting ready to watch the third video here that's mrs beat okay she's going to join me for the third video we're almost done with the second video so for the other part of the tree george leapst and mabel whitcomb yeah. are his great grandparents they are and one of these children is i don't remember much about them um they died when i was a kid but uh uh Great Grandpa Leapst, I know, famously had a glass eye that he would take out to freak out the kids in the neighborhood. Uh, One of his grandparents. So this is exactly what we want, because now we have it brought down very, very specifically. And not only that, it all matches exactly what we were expecting based on the what are the odds analyses. Nice. So from here, using this, I built a tree, which we will then, for the future episodes, be working off of as we dive deeper into Mr. Beat's tree. Now, he supplied me a whole bunch of information that I have not looked at yet. Yes. So what I did after he told me he was going to do this was I... I uh, went to my parents and said, hey, what do we have uh, as far as records for the family? And surprisingly, we had a lot. Um, and I spent hours with them just kind of looking at a lot of it. A lot of it I had never seen before, and it was really interesting. 
Um, that's how I found out I was uh, related. Uh, my great grandma's uh, cousin was the governor of Indiana. Um, uh, oh gosh, I forgot his name. Let me look it up real quick so you can. By the way, I have no plans to run for governor of Kansas. Um, people, the rumors have been swirling. What was the guy? The name of the governor who I was related to? I forgot his name. I'm trying to find the uh, tweet that I. Uh, is anybody in the chat? Oh, here it is. Um, here, let me share the uh, my screen. Uh, Because uh, I did a lot of digging, and uh, so this this is the guy who um, was, and he's like I, researching him. He seems like the world's most interesting man. Um, but yeah, governor of Indiana. Um, apparently, late in in life, he sailed uh, around the world in a sailboat, which, which was pretty fascinating. Um, but yeah. Uh, that, among other things that I, I found out. Hello. Hi. Um, my cord's not that long. Uh, so we're just wrapping up the... You won't be able to hear it. <laughs> so I don't know. You might want to watch it in a different room. Um, so let's see here. You can't take that headphone off. No, because there's like a. Because I did not want to. Um, you hear the I want to say background. Sally, I don't. I didn't want to like. Or it picks up in the mic. my information, or just you know, I I wanted it to be authentic in how this was done. Yeah. So I will be looking. No, he. This is impressive that the fact that he was able to build this again just with DNA, and I did give him a lot of information. So I imagine the future episodes will be very thorough that information now because there are a few things that he has asked me to look into specifically that i think will be very interesting topics as we go along but before we end the video can i say what that is one of the things one of the things i'm going to look into is uh well this is something that we don't have very good records on but supposedly um i we always kind of half joke of that i'm a a descendant of uh, Pocahontas that um, pa I have Powhatan um, in my heritage. So I do want to show now the family tree that I was able to determine using only this information and knowing that the last name was beat allowed me to identify because I knew the grandparents. I mean, there's not a lot of beats out there, so that probably helped as well. All I really had to do was find that beat name connected to the grandparents, and then I could determine which child of theirs name. was his parent. And using all of that information, okay, I, I was able to create this pedigree at this point. And you can all right. So yeah, John Henry Beat. Uh, I am the one who I'm the one who uploaded that photo on Find a Grave. Um, by the way, it's uh, when my grandfather was uh, in. Uh, uh, the military. Um, he served in the Korean War. Um, and then uh, my grandma beat. Uh, my dad's mom, uh, Mary Hawkup, was, is, was her maiden name. Shout out to her. She's also still living. So I have three grandparents that are living. Um, and then going back, uh, yeah, I, you know, these are all great grandparents. Um, as far as who I actually knew, um, Stella was someone I, uh, my great grandma uh, uh, Schmidt, who uh, was Roush, um, but Schmidt was her maiden name. I, I met her a few times. Most of my great grandparents, of course, I didn't know very well. But um, it's cool though on the beat side that we have pictures. I've never um, seen a picture, or, or no, I, I take that back. I recently only first saw pictures of um, my great grandfather uh, William beat and great grandmother Gertrude Struble. Um, I have actually been in contact with Strubles through Facebook, believe it or not, over the years. Um, they had a distant relative group that we all connected on. Uh, there's my great grandfather Leapst and um, great uh, 
Grandma Leapst, and her maiden name was Whit Whitcomb. Yep. And uh, who else we forget? Okay. Uh, my Grandma Beats parents, uh, for Ferdinand Hockup, which uh, I forgot that his name was Ferdinand. <laughs> and Francis Nett was the maiden name. So, yeah. Once you get beyond that, though, like, it's impressive that you have pictures, but I, you know, these are all my great great grandparents. Um, but this is pretty impressive that he's already at the end of the second episode put th this together. So you can see I started to put some pictures in, and then it was like, Oh, he put oh, some pictures just, in too. Yeah, know, I don't worry too much about Look at that. It. But this gives us a great jumping off point for our future research. Well, thank you so much for all checking right. out this so that's video. the second episode. Uh, the third episode gets a little bit juicier, and that's where I the title comes in of this live stream is "Am I Am I Related to uh, Presidents?" You know. Um, so, oh wow, super chat, thank you. Oh Dante again, a shout out to Dante Verona, very generous supporter of the channel, a friend of the channel. Um, says sorry I'm late for the live stream, but I have a good excuse. Excuse I was drinking red <laughs> red wine, but I don't want to interrupt as you were. No, you're fine. Thank you so much. You're yeah. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, we uh, anything I should know about before I watch episode three? And do you want to watch it separately, like so you can hear it? Um. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, doing that uh, in a different room. Or yeah, I mean, you can hop on. I, I sent you a link to hop on too, so you can you can still talk. Oh. As okay. we watch it together. Never done that before, so bear with me. Yeah. Um, Are the girls in bed? Supposed to be. Are you asleep? <laughs> um, I don't know. We're, we're probably keeping them up. I think and we're driving to Chicago tomorrow. So. I think that it would be best just to watch, just start watching it because he does. Just, I don't want to say too much. Is but. it, uh, did anything surprise you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that the audience is going to be uh, impressed with this or? Yeah. It's kind of a it's kind of a slow start, I'll be honest, Jared. Like you know, a lot of that you getting into the, the weeds with the is is where it, it gets pretty good. Yeah. Okay. But you have to have the first two in order to see where you know. He's well, yeah, to show that he's the real yeah. deal. But like that, the fact yeah. that he just dug into the DNA only DNA. Okay. Hey, Osbers Gaming. Always a shout out to you. Sunflower Sh Socialist is here. JB, uh, JB one four nine nine eight and friends has been one of my longest supporters since back in the day okay uh jacob uh you're awesome thanks for being here i know you got to go to school tomorrow so um anyway so let's go ahead and watch the third episode uh if you have just joined um just a reminder what we're doing here um there's a youtube channel called genie vlogger and his name is Jarrett ross he's actually a genealogist who um apparently looks at the here he is I already liked it. Somebody disliked it again. What the heck, same dude? Person. <laughs> Probably the same person just hates me. Um, but the uh, sorry about that, Jarrett. But uh, he he uh, is a genealogist, but he does like forensic stuff, you know, to help solve crimes of the past, which is I think is really cool as well. But he uh, has this series where he's been looking at uh, building family trees of of history YouTubers, and I am fortunate to be the second one he's done this for. All right. Cool. I'm going to start watching the third one. She's going to watch it. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. I am Jer Ross, a genie vlogger. And on today's vlog, we'll be seeing how Mr. Beat is related to his top 10 presidents. What the heck? What? <laughs> See, okay. I, um, I have to say that, uh, I accidentally may have seen him tweet about this. Um, so that's kind of how I, I wasn't supposed to know that, but a little bit of a spoiler alert. So, but yeah, uh, I didn't realize it was top one of my top 10 presidents that I may be a distant relative of. So yeah, that's, that's exciting. Now in the first two episodes of this season, we built Mr. Beat's tree using only his genetic matches from family tree DNA and Jed Match, in a way, basically mimicking what it's like to do a forensic genetic genealogy case, a cold case, basically. And now that we've actually built the family tree, we're going to look into the other things we can do outside of just what, you know, forensic genetic genealogy. I can tell you that 
Jarrett, man, he looks tired with this video. Like he's been like spending way too much time building my family tree. So thank you, <laughs> thank you, Jared, for coming. So we're gonna look into a lot of stuff uh, in ancestry on other websites like genie.com and DNA Painter. So now that I have the family tree built out, and this is the uh -huh. family tree right here, we can see that. Okay, yeah. So this is from the end of the last video. So this is nothing new here. Um, uh, looks like he's hasn't got to my um, my, my parents um, yet, and their siblings. Their many siblings. That it's got a lot of uh, information. We have pictures. We have a lot of dates. Uh, it, it's really good. It's it's extended out far um, on a lot of the branches. Now I I should say too that a lot of this is still built off of those quick and dirty trees. So one thing that I will need to do is go through and clean it up. And in a sense, cleaning it up is basically just going through checking documentation, making sure that you can verify those branches and, you know, that it, that it actually fits with the paper trail. I talked about this in the last season as well, but one way and the best way I think to look at it is going through each branch and almost trying to disprove it instead of proving it. And just coming in it that way can be helpful in thinking of it differently to try to find other documentation that maybe you wouldn't look up um, just that's how a scientist thinks. So yeah, every field that's kind of what they they do. It's it's good methodology because you you know assume that the connection is correct. So you know maybe you find a census record, but maybe you want to look and see are there other people with the same name mm -hmm. in that same census year in the same area because that's a big uh, mix up that can happen. But from here, I want to hook in the ancestry DNA profile that Mr. B has into this family tree that I've built. And by doing that, we'll be able to access different tools Ancestry DNA gives you. Um, although I should say that there might be limitations for anyone that doesn't have a Ancestry membership. So yeah. you pay for the Ancestry DNA kit, but then Ancestry has a separate membership to access their database, look at records and do a lot more things. So you may be limited if you don't have a membership. But to do that, all we need to do is we need to go to the DNA tab and look at our DNA results in Mr. Beat and do it through settings. So we have Mr. Beat's profile pulled up and we go over <laughs> here to settings. And Wait, who allowed him on this? No, I, don't worry. I let him. I let him access this. And when we're in settings, we can see that it's already hooked up tree link, but we can hit change. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you built a tree and then you didn't like it and you decided to build a second tree that was better. Okay, Mrs. B is joined. All right, welcome. Hi. You are with. You are broadcasting to the world. 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 Okay. Play the, feel free to interrupt as well. You can then link it to a different family tree through this. Um, but for anyone who doesn't already have it set up, going through uh, this is how you do it. And I've already gone through and done it because once you do it, it takes a while for it to populate the information. But the main thing that we want to look at are our through lines. And so we're going to hit explore through lines. And what through lines is, is this tool that Ancestry has where it looks at all of your genetic matches and anybody that has set up a family tree where they've put their D connected their DNA to their family tree. And then it finds if there's shared ancestors. And when it does that, it will then use this, create, put that in through lines. But one other thing. It's a great tool. Um, I think I missed a super chat. Oh, thank you, uh, Vaughn. I'm calling it now. You are 100% related to Ike. <laughs> thing through lines does is that it will hypothesize how people might be related based on um, how they're matching other people based what you can think of in that same cluster in a sense, um, as well as if maybe there's matches where there's similar similarities between certain surnames and locations, and they're also matching through DNA. And there's a whole system. Now, I took a look through, and I couldn't really find if there was a white paper. Um, I don't know if I'm going to show any of that searching. Not really that interesting, but basically it <laughs> didn't seem like there was any white paper. Although they do have white papers for different estimates. 
Now, before we scroll through the through lines, I should say that Mr. Beat has what I like to call a perfect storm when it comes to genetic genealogy. Basically, Ooh, he had <laughs> that scary yeah. family tree that can be easily built out. And on top of that, he has a lot of DNA matches who have shared their family tree information and connected it to their DNA. Did, did, did that surprise you, uh, Shannon? Did that surprise you? No, I, I don't think so. You know, because, uh, you know, well, like he said, uh, through lines wasn't as reliable as, as some, but um, yeah, but yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to have some good information here. This is. Yeah. It's, uh... and because of that, what we're going to see through through lines is that he has a massive family tree that can be confirmed through the paper trail and through DNA. So here we have that page and here we start with grandparents. So yep. um, we have his paternal grandparents and this is because they aren't marked as living in the family tree. And we can see that there's one DNA match. Now, for privacy well, reasons, living. I'm not going to show the information. Yeah, I wonder match, why. But we're going to look at some other ones where it's privatized enough that we can. Yeah, she just she turned 90 this year. Yeah. Shout out to Grandma, Grandma Beat. I, I'll feel comfortable showing it. But as we scroll through, we see, okay, we have his eight great grandparents. You notice that a lot of these, uh, my ancestors, they... You know, unless I get in a car accident, I think I have pretty solid a solid lifespan ahead of me, in the, unless somebody assassinates me or something. Parents, <laughs> once again, there's only one match through uh, the beat side, but then we see for the Howcaps, there's two DNA matches, and then there's none for Roush and Schmidt here. And then we have George Liebst and Mabel Irene Whitcomb, two DNA mm. matches for that as well. Well, now we get into second great grandparents and we see a lot of great pictures. And on top of that, we have 11 DNA matches who descend from Henry Beat and Catherine Klaus. We have nine DNA matches who match through William Henry Struble and Marianne Creighton. And um, interestingly enough, Marianne Creighton, this is Mr. Beat's most recent Irish ancestry. So just something fun to mention. We're going to look. Oh, Irish, eh? <laughs> so I was trying to do an Irish accent now. I don't recognize any of these pictures. <laughs> no, so. the the pictures up a little further, I you know resemble you and your family a little more than than these photos. But yeah. good to see that uh, second great grandfather Henry Beat had the mustache going. Yes, on. yeah. Just like like Taft, Taft would be proud. Look at birthplaces in a bit later in the episode mm -hmm. as well. Um, but you can see we have a whole lot. So once we get back here, we've got a lot of matches. Wow. And um, we can even see now we're getting into third great grandparents. Wow. And so there, yeah. All of these are confirmed. I, I, do, so I do recognize. That John B there. That resemb resembles your father a lot. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. And then we just get tombstones. That's that's lovely. <laughs> well, this family tree was pretty easy to build out. We did it that quick and dirty way. I was able to go through. Um, up, I think I did it up to the second great grandparents where I just made sure the documentation was all correct. And then uh, for the lines that we're going to look into in future episodes, I did more uh, research to try to confirm those. Uh, Alex says hi. Well, hi, Alex. And thanks for the super chat. Hey, Mr. Beat, I appreciate your content. Keep up the good work, dude. Keep it, uh, dude. Keep educating the masses. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I think there's another one too I missed. I hope I didn't miss it. Uh, maybe I, I'm dreaming. Okay, um, but we good. can see all of this great stuff, all of these matches, and all of these great pictures of his ancestors. <laughs> And when we get back down here, let's gonna find it. Now we can see we're getting into these potential ancestors. Mm. So this is where they're guessing based on different information. So clicking on what this information one, are they guessing? Uh, basically, we can see that this is a mm. guess, and we can evaluate, and it shows us who are all the different member trees 
and where are they getting this information from to make this guess? And okay. what we can do is we can go through and check, are these correct? Now, are they correct? Possibly one big issue I see, there's zero records connected to everything. Like there's none yeah. at all connected, which means when going through to check if that is correct, if I were to do that, I would then want to make sure there's actual documentation behind it. And if not, why is why why do all these trees have that? Just because you find it in a lot of trees doesn't mean that it's correct because a lot of incorrect information will be proliferated through Ancestry because of how easy it is to copy over information, as we've seen mm -hmm. um, both last season and even already this season. So going down, there's an ancestor I'm looking for. So here we go. So for this ancestor, Mary Goltree, this is an ancestor that we're going to be looking into in a future episode. And this okay. is an ancestor that Mr. Beat actually asked me personally to look into uh, for specific reasons. So oh, the reason I told you about earlier. Really how <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. So we can see we have Mr. Beat down here. Uh, this four just shows Which how one? he connects. So it's yeah. his mom, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandfather, and then his third great-grandfather. And then we see these siblings. There's Melissa, Louisa, Sarah, and Lyman. And we can see, so there's one DNA match through Lyman, five DNA matches through Sarah, four through Louisa, and four through Melissa. And all of them descend from hmm. Galtry. And more than likely, all of them are also all matching each other as well. So if we were to go in and look at GW's shared matches, we would see a lot of matches coming specifically from this family tree. And this is one of the biggest things with DNA that a lot of people don't really discuss as much with videos. You know, focus is always the admixtures and the percentages, which, you know, they're great, but the power really comes in proving family trees figuring out different information and then you can truly know your ancestry so we know for a fact that this mary galtry is a fourth great grandmother of mr beat now another thing i want to do and really show is connecting mr beat into genie.com's world family tree and this is how we're going to find out how mr beat is related through his top 10 presidents so what i use is the smart copy tool now, to get the smart copy tool, you need to have a browser that allows the extensions. And uh, hmm. it's Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and MS Edge, which we can see here on the page that are the best to use it with. There is a video how to use smart copy. But once you have smart copy installed and go through the process to be authorized to use it, you will then get a little symbol on your extension like this. And that's the smart copy symbol. So from here, what we want to do is we want to find the place where we want to copy from Ancestry to Genie. So to start, let's say you're starting completely from scratch. Um, if you go on a genie.com, they're going to have a whole process where you enter in your family tree and you can start from there. And then once you get a, uh, get everything set up, then you can go through smart copy to get things added. So I've basically built out the family tree on Genie, although I've left some spots to show through smart copy. So we're going to add some information on the beat side. So right now we have William Fred beat here and we see we had a bunch of siblings we have a whole lot of children for him but when we look over here we see we only have one of his kids john henry beat so what we want to do is we're going to copy his number now the number will be the url up here so he's the focal point of the family tree but if he weren't the focal point of the family tree and you wanted to get that number one thing you could do is you can just go to his actual profile on genie so we it's do a profile that. i didn't even and here's william fred beats profile and just go up here to the url and it's that number that you want so you want to copy that and then we're going to go back over to ancestry and now i'm going to click my smart copy button put in that id number and then it's going to load everything and you can do a quick ad. I personally like to go through and make sure everything's nice and tidy. Uh, so like one thing, last name, her last name is Beat, the way that uh, Jeannie does it. They have first, middle, last name, birth name, 
uh, which you can also think of as maiden name. They have suffixes, display names, and you can also do also known as. And then once you get on Genie, you can also do different languages, which this is one. Alsace Lorraine is where a lot of them came from. I don't know if you caught that. France. Where's that? Oh. Uh, okay. Eastern France. On the, close to the border of Germany. The reason okay. I personally love Genie is because there's so many options when it comes to languages and names where a lot of programs like Ancestry, Ancestry just gives you first name, middle name, last name. And that's it. And uh, when it comes to names- You will never know my middle name. Just American <laughs> style names. It I'm gets sure really complicated. So, you know, dealing with double surnames. You have names that have all sorts of articles. Um, so like in the Netherlands, you have what's known as Tussenvogels. You have all sorts of different naming traditions that might That's be different. Right. There's patronymic naming traditions. There's matrilineal uh, he was also so born naming in the 80s. traditions. Yeah. <laughs> There's all sorts of different naming traditions and naming styles that just don't fit into the typical first name, last name middle name sort of thing so that's one thing i'll add everything else basically looks the same um it looks like we have something a little different there but i'm just going to keep it and then update henry b uh it's a nice tool okay so we didn't have the marriage date all the rest looks the same and then for the kids so we have edward b so we find edward b update edward and it looks like it adds a good amount of information, actually. And then we can just click that, and that'll add in all the other siblings. And you can click through and just kind of make sure everything makes sense. One thing you can do also, make sure that there's no double names. You don't want to add duplicates because it's annoying to have to clean it up on Genie. And so just kind of doing the same thing. We update that. Everything's already over here on the right. This is what they have on Genie. Over on the left, if you click. Oh, uh, Sun Sunflower Socialist, uh, you had a super chat. What was it? Yeah, I saw all that. Right. You said that you Reviews. missed it. Yeah, post it again and I'll, I'll shout it out. Get, that's what it'll change it to. So that's um, why some things you'll see, like I'm not going to add the last name beat here because Jeannie already has it. So we don't need to worry about it. Although that's basically the same. And then for the children, I think it's, yeah, just John Henry. So update John Henry, and it's all the same. And then do that. I didn't know Henry was so this middle name. John Henry. I guess yeah. so. And so yeah. now we submit. And so that's going to add in all of that information. We see it's taking a while. Don't click off of it, because if you click off of it, it'll stop. Like if you just click on the side, or if you click to a different tab, it will stop it. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. His message was, Sunflower Socialist says, uh, I'm glad you're a fellow Mick. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> what is that? Uh, elaborate. <laughs> so now we're going to go back here and we're going to refresh the page. Okay. And we're going to see all of that information now added Ooh. into the tree on Genie. And from here, as you add things in, you're going to get things like these magnifying glasses. Now, if you pay for a membership on Genie, you can get access to this stuff. If you don't pay for a membership on Genie, it won't really matter. You'll still be able to do everything else that I've shown you. But now that we have Mr. Beat connected to the world tree, we're going to get into the really cool stuff finding out how you're related to people because that's one of the cool things about the world tree. I've said the world tree a couple <laughs> of times, but I haven't explained it. And what it is, is this family tree online where instead of everyone building their own singular trees, focusing it's all connected, focusing on their own families. This is one tree where there's no duplicate profiles or duplicate trees. Everything gets merged together. And so everyone's working on one tree. If you think about, you know, all the spouses of all of your cousins, all of their trees connected to your tree, and then all the spouses of their cousins connected to that tree, and then trace it back and all forward and all over the place. Folks, this is why it is ridiculous that we fight over such superficial differences, you know, like, uh, you know, what your religious beliefs are or what your skin color is or what your, uh, whatever your culture is, because we're all freaking in the same tree. I mean, you can connect literally everyone else to everyone else. That, that's the whole when you think about family trees, they're multidimensional. And that's the cool thing about Genie is that it shows you that. 
and it will even show you relationships which are called space ball relationships. I am your father's, <laughs> brother's, nephew's, cousin's former roommate. And so that term was coined <laughs> by a cousin of mine and fellow Genie user, Steve Jaron. But going straight oh, to Mr. Beat's profile, of yours. and cool. we look here, we already I already have it figured out. Shortest in-law relationship. Oh, wait. Matthew Beat is your aunt's first cousin, once removed, second great-grandfather's wife's niece's his husband, sixth great-nephew. <laughs> Uh, Matthew Beat is your nineteenth cousin, thrice removed. Wait. I always knew we were related. This is this is Jarrett. Yeah. And you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, we found out that me. I don't know if he's going to say this, but me. Mm -hmm. and, does he say it at useful charts? Uh, I don't remember. Um, me and Matt from useful charts are fifth yeah. cousins, I think. Oh, so much yeah. closer in the tree. Yeah. So Matt and I have a Spaceballs relationship <laughs> where Matt is my aunt's first cousin okay. once removed, second great grandfather's wife's niece's husband's sixth great nephew. For our actual blood relationship, brothers. because we do have one, we are 19th cousins three times removed. Oh. Okay, so showing that... Yeah. This is how oh, we wow. are related. Now, I should say, and this gets me to a really good point about once you do this. That's crazy. That this line of mine connecting to this ancestry is questionable. It comes right. from a book called The Belmont Belmonte Family. And it's from, I think, the early 20th century. It might be. I've read that book. It's It, it was bigger than the Bible. Bestseller. No, I'm kidding. It's been on your bookshelf. Back. 19th century. Um, but it was basically a genealogy of all these Jewish Belmont Belmonte families. And when you look at the line, you'll see I have a Gracia Belmonte through this line. Mm. And they um, hypothesized in that book that there's a connection through her family and then through Leah Jacob Nunez uh, Enriquez to Sarah Disson. Oh, crap. Are we going to find out how we're related? I know. I, I, <laughs> so many people are going to be doing this. You're going to be like, oh, after it, when he joins us, we might chat a little about something else, but not quite yet. Okay. All right. I'll just keep it playing here then. <laughs> and then going all the way up until uh, we can see her father, his father, his father, his mother, all the way. And we see, okay. Her father, so Philippa de Lancaster, John of Gaunt, is her father. And Matt Beat descends from Joan Buford. So Mr. Beat and I, our shared ancestor. Well, I just looked it up in Eleanor, Ro Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, oh, it was fifth cousins once removed with Franklin Roosevelt. Okay, who's this dude? That This is how you and Jarrett are related. That's, this is like the common... Oh yeah, yeah. Look at him. I am. Um, I, I am uh, Matt. Uh, Matt friend? of Douglas County, first Duke of Lawrence. Lawrence <laughs> is John first of Gaunt, Earl first Duke of, Duke of Lancaster, yeah. first My basement. Earl of Richmond, born in 1340, died in 1399. Now, is this true? As I said, well, it's basically unproven. And this is a major problem on Genie, and really it's a major problem on all of the Family Tree websites. When you look at family trees that are built by other people, there can be errors. It's basically, the way I think about Genie, it's kind of like Wikipedia of family trees. And in fact, there's a family tree website just like Genie, although somewhat different, called WikiTree, oh, where it's that, that exact yeah. idea, doing family trees in a wiki style. So it, these type of trees are called collaborative trees, where there's just one tree, everything merges That's together, <laughs> everyone works on a singular tree. But then errors will be there, and when you look at how are you connected to people, well, sometimes it might connect you to people, but that connection, there's an error that someone else added. So you have to go through and verify some of these connections. But before we jump into how Mr. Beat is related to his top 10 presidents, I had decided to message him asking, who were your top five historical <laughs> figures that weren't presidents? 
because I wanted to see yeah. what he what he said and could it bring up some interesting connections. So I'm actually going to show you how you can do this yourself if you connect into the world tree. So we are on Mr. Beat's page <laughs> and what you can do if you have access to that page, you can do this pin. And when you click that pin, now when you go to profiles, it's going to show you how this person is related to others. So mm. the first historical figure was Martin Luther King Jr. So here we see Martin Luther King is Matt Beat's 15th cousin twice removed. Yes. He's also his first cousin six times removed, wife's third cousin four times removed. Now, as you build out the tree and you connect wait, more wait, wait. and more, so sometimes I am the first closer, historical figure was Martin Luther King. I'm closer here we to see Dr. Martin King. Luther King. I'm closer to him than I am Jarrett. Well, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. is your 15th cousin, twice removed. Oh, okay. That's uh, second. Here it was six, but I, I can't remember what his was. Okay. King okay. is Matt Beat's 15th cousin, twice removed. Still, basically He's cousins. also his first cousin, six times removed, wife's third cousin, four times removed. Okay. Now, as you build out the tree and you connect oh. more and more, sometimes you will find close relations to people because everybody's related. And even more, a lot of people are related in multiple ways. And when you have really well built out trees, you can often find that. So this little arrow sort of thing, click that and it's going to recalculate that connection. So if we found a closer relation, it will ah. show that. And there we go. Now it's loaded and we see it's the same. So we see that Mr. Beat is related to Martin Luther King through mm -hmm. his mother. And then when we click to see Ooh. further, Thanks, Mom. we can <laughs> find where are um, where are they connecting. Whoa, William and Henry connection Harrison. connection is here. So George Mainwaring oh, and Marjorie okay. Egerton. I don't know if I'm pronouncing those right. They were brother and sister. So their parents... William Domain Waring and Margaret Warren of Itefield would be the shared ancestors between Mr. B. So how does he figure that out? Now, another one was Harriet Tubman. And I can tell you right off the bat, there is no connection to Harriet Tubman. I believe that she is not connected into the world family. There's probably less point, less data, even through like tangential relations. I don't, know how well anyone's worked on the tree and how much they've built out but i know i've tried to connect him to her and they didn't find anything and when they don't find anything they aren't they just aren't connected into the world tree and there we see no in-law relation uh, no blood relation sorry harriet found. so now i'm just going to go through the other three original name on there governor robert la follette <laughs> senior the follett mr beats <laughs> fighting cousin, bob three times yeah removed. Mark Twain Mark is Mr. Twain. Beat's ninth cousin four times removed. Well, hold on. Let me go back to... Chief this one goes pretty Dave, fast. Yeah. They just aren't found. Fighting Bob So was now what? I'm just going to go through the other three real quickly. Governor Robert Loft... And Senator. Okay. Uh, he is... Twelfth um, cousin thrice removed. Not bad. Follett Sr., Mr. Beat's twelfth cousin three times removed. Mark Twain is Mr. Beat. Ooh, ninth cousin, four times removed. Okay. Well, you know, he has Missouri roots. So. Ninth cousin, four times removed. And then for Chief Joseph the Younger, he is Mr. Beat's six great uncles, brothers, wife's <laughs> first cousin, twice <laughs> removes, wife's nephews, ex wife's first cousin, four times removed. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So now yeah, we're going to end the episode by nothing. diving into some tools through DNA Painter to get a really cool look at Mr. Beat's tree and like some this. of what's going on with his yeah. DNA. So the first thing we're going to look at in DNA Painter are the ancestral trees. Now for the ancestral trees, it's going to be just kind of a cool look at the family tree and what's been built so far. So I had already done a test tree for Mr. Beat, but I have a much more completed GEDCOM now. So there's two ways to get what you need. And uh, what you need is a GEDCOM file. To get that through Ancestry, so just going back, we go to the family tree, we go into settings. So you could be anywhere, just click on that one in the top left and you'll see manage your tree and you can click export tree and it will send you a GEDCOM file. For genie.com, you go to the page of the person where you want the focus <laughs> of the tree. Look who my father is. Wait, who? Yeah. My mother, is, my mother is D-Beat, and my father is Beat-Beat. Beat-Beat. 
<laughs> well, they, his friends always called him Beat, you know, growing up. Click so. actions and go to export GEDCOM. Now, there will be limitations on how much of the GEDCOM you can export on Genie based on how much you've added, as well as uh, whether or not you're a member. And I think there's a few other stipulations. So you might want to double check before focusing mostly on Genie to get your GEDCOM. Mm -hmm. But you can see we can export blood relatives, DNA relatives. For us, our focus is ancestors because DNA Painter mostly focuses on ancestors. So we'd click that, export, and then it, it takes a while to, to build it. I've already gone and done that. So we're going to create a new tree. And so this is just a basic uh, setup. We're going to do load GEDCOM. I'm going to go Operation in. Jet this com. is the jet Buckle com. your safety belts. Open that up. So once you get here, then you're going to type in the name of the person that you want to be the focus. So we have Matthew Beat. Place the names of Heard living of people them. with living. Import all available generations. And then import notes. And Give me a generation. Give them. And so here we go. We have a family tree. So one thing you can do, you can change how many generations you look at. And then of, <laughs> uh, you can also change the zoom so we can see whoa well, that's a whole lot post. and it tries to color code families yeah um, so good we're luck with that. drop this down just so it's not going crazy we are going to make it larger so um we can also do a fan view and then we can also do a text view and it just is uh you know people that uh -huh. like it different ways but one of the coolest things, and we're going to do fan view, is the dimensions. So we're going to add some dimensions. And we can see there's age of death, birth of century, country of birth, and then research level. We're not going to look at research level, but we are going to build the dimensions for the other three. And this is just really cool in that it shows you um, different things to think about with your tree. Okay, so the dimension has been added. And if you click the drop downs, you can edit the different dimensions, the coloring, how they uh, do it. So we see here we have all the different countries of birth that uh, are in his tree. Okay, that's, uh, oh, undetermined is part of, okay. But yeah, this is, I guess, mostly no surprise. Jersey. Huh. I was just gonna say, Jer Jersey, what is that? Uh, it, I imagine it was in Europe. Um, oh. uh, yeah. yeah, nothing too surprising there. So we're going to exit out of this. And now when we do dimensions, we'll get these options. Curious so at the country of birth. And here we see okay. all the country of birth uh, for Mr. Beats ancestry. And we see that there is a lot of the United States. So the Dang red Americans. is the United States. And so these are all the people that were born in the U.S. And you can see where they were born. And then these are all of his ancestors. Man, come back there a little bit. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, well. Uh, what are you looking for? Tree. All the American so places. Out of this, uh, and now when we do dimensions, we'll get these options. So country of birth. And here we see all the country of birth uh, for Mr. Beat's ancestry. And we see that there is a lot of the United States. So the red is the United States. And so yeah a lot of midwest oh started out in new jersey these are all the people that were born in the u.s and you can see where they were born hmm. and then these are all of his ancestors as well so then we can see this over here this is all france hmm. so when we click it it's france, france and we notice yeah a lot of like i said earlier uh <laughs> Eastern France. It's all in, or for the most part, it's all Sace uh, Lorraine uh, in that area. Yeah. So when you look at a lot of the French, it's a lot of the same areas, but not all of it necessarily. Then um, we also, the purple is another one. He has a big amount from Russia. So mm. we can see all of these different fam, uh, these, these family lines coming from Russia. And then we even see that for some of the Russian ones, once you go back far enough, there's some different things going on. So German to Russia, then we have France to Russia. Then when we click off, we can also see we have Netherlands right here. And I know that the parents here, they should also be in the Netherlands. <laughs> and then we see we also get a whole lot of Germany. So when we click yeah. on Germany, we can see 
there's a lot of it all over. I um, I found that there's a big part of the family coming from Wurttemberg. There's also a big mm-hmm. part of the family that was coming from the Rhineland area. And okay. then if we remember, he had that Irish ancestry. And there we have those Irish ancestors. Cork. Now, the most recent Irish ancestry was that Craden. And we see right here, Marianne Craden. She was born in the U.S., but her parents were born in Ireland. So you can actually go in, edit, and add ireland oh see that easy. and there you go now it's added in so if it's missing for whatever reason sometimes it doesn't go over you can go in and edit it so now we have that edited in so it just kind of gives you a view a different dimension of the family tree then we can also look birth century so here's all the centuries where everyone was born mm. so we can see that once you get back to the second great grandparents level and the third great grandparents all of his second and third great grandparents were born sometime in the 1800s whereas some of his great grandparents they mm. were born in the 1900s and others were born in the late 1800s and then all of his grandparents were you know everyone else was 1900s then we can look back too and we can see that once we get back to the fourth great grandparent level that's where most of them are being born in the 1700s and then it gets even further back once you get into the 1600s wow that goes back far for the last dimension we have age at death and we can see just you know, huh. how old this everyone one, is. I thought you would like see this one. As you get yeah, there. see, I'm telling you, I have good genes. Look at that. What um, a dark blue on there. Look at the dark, yeah. But look how it's darker, you know, um, closer to where we are and lighter, you know. Thanks to the wonders of vaccines. <laughs> closer but, in um, time, the family the- tree we're I'll going go to oh. what happened? I accidentally started it over. <gasps> okay, where was it? Don't look, don't look. <laughs> I almost did there. Here we go. Okay, there are some dark blue way back there, we're kind of at the top. Oh wow, yeah. Like in the I wonder what year that was. Uh that would have been uh fifteen hundreds. Well, this is Nine, 1900s, 18, 17. There's a lot of dark blue. Oh, it goes before the 1500s. Yeah. Wow. That's, so, yeah. Okay, then that, that works out for me. And, he just, yeah. you know, how old everyone is. And you can kind of see as you get closer in time, the age seem, the, the age seems to get higher. So yeah, that's the, for everybody, though, really. People are living longer yeah. on average. So for his family, he had a whole lot of people living into their 80s and 90s and, um, you know, a lot of longevity. But then once you kind of get back, you'll notice a lot of people passing away in their in their 40s and their 30s. And um, just kind of it's an interesting thing to see that. But now we're going to look at the actual DNA painting. And this is the page I've created for Mr. Beat. And I'm going to quickly show how to add in a, a first cousin that Mr. Beat has. Um, I had Mr. Beat ask her to put her DNA on GEDmatch so I could get the information that's been done. And now I'm going to show how to transfer that in. So we've already transferred in different uh, information for matches. So when we click the chromosome, we can see I've labeled the different matches um, in a way so that they're still private, but we can see where how they're related. And by using that, we can basically make the guess that, okay, well, if Mr. Beat's related to them this way the DNA that he's sharing with them must come through his ancestor through which they're related. So as an example on his maternal line, we see this GB. Well, that relation is through Gerhardt Tennyson. So we know that Mr. Beat is getting that through Gerhardt. And as well, when we talk about DNA, we always talk about pairs of chromosomes, one from the mom, one from the dad. And this breaks it down where you don't always get that when you look at the chromosome browsers on other sites so we can even down here on the bottom right we can limit it to just the paternal or just the maternal and right now the paternal is a little limited but our Mm. first cousin that we're going to add is a first cousin through mr beat's paternal side to get the information you need you need to go on gedmatch do a one-to-one autosomal dna comparison and you're going to do position only 
And when it comes out, you're going to get a list like this. <laughs> and you're literally just going to copy this all the way down. And we're going to go back to DNA Painter and we're going to paint a new match. And we're just going to paste it in. Save match now. Enter the name of this match. And I'm just going to put the initials. And the ancestor, this is through Mr. Beat's father. So this is a first cousin. So they share grandparents. So the DNA, he is inheriting it from his father. So I'm just going to call it Papa Beat because we know this is from <laughs> his father. Um, obviously it's going to be paternal chromosomes, so we'll know that anyway. Um, but we're going to set that as paternal. And so then we're going to save match. And so now we see all of this DNA painting and we just, all of that that's being painted, that's coming from his first cousin. So that's all the spots where he's sharing DNA with his yeah. first cousin. And we can look at all. And one of the things that we can do, we can look at traits info. Now, I already have this loaded in, but you may have to go to the settings wheel here, click show traits for it to come in. But the traits info, it gives you the information here, but I'm going to talk about that real quick. It basically puts in these pins. So and then is this the cousin that uh, I... Yeah, you messaged, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't think, I don't know if she, yeah. I don't know if she wants me to tell, tell everybody who she is. Yeah, so. <laughs> just, yeah. just say J.H., JH, yeah, she she's my first cousin. Lives in town here. If you have an ancestor sign there, <laughs> it, you can basically get an idea of where you're inheriting that trait. So for Mr. Beat, we see blonde hair color. Well, I don't think he has blonde hair, but assuming maybe that's a recessive gene, if he has it, that would be coming from George Leaps, his first great oh. his great grandfather. But we have <laughs> another one here. So ABO blood type. So blood wow. type is controlled by a single gene, ABO. If you map an ancestor's I'm DNA mutation, then you can see which ancestors likely contributed to your blood type. Well, here we see that we have George Leapst, and then we also have Papa Beat. But unfortunately, with the Papa Beat stuff, that's just not quite as helpful. But one fun thing, we have the baldness. baldness. And we see male oh, no. baldness. This is on the X chromosome, which I think this is one of the reasons why you hear that rumor that it depends on what your mother's father's had. Um, although I think that's been debunked, which, you know, yeah. is what it is, but, uh, that's coming from his third great grandfather, William Rogers. And we can actually see a big <laughs> chunk of his X chromosome is coming from that third great grandfather. So now Mr. Huh. Beats top 10 presidents and how he is related to them. And finally, the Number moment 10, you've been waiting for James Garfield, Mr. Beats seventh cousin, five times removed with their recent ancestors being Thomas Lee and Phoebe Cornish Brown. Uh, uh, where's he seeing that at oh at the top oh yeah seventh seventh cousin five times removed okay all right thomas lee died in 1646 and phoebe remarried to a james cornish number nine james madison mr beats wow six cousin nine times removed oh, nine recent times ancestors removed. being john underwood and elizabeth underwood born elizabeth salmon Number eight, JFK, Mr. Beat's half, 21st cousin, twice removed, <laughs> with their most recent ancestor being Gilbert DeClaire, seventh Earl of Gloucester. We go way back Number to Gilbert seven, DeClaire. Harry Truman, Mr. Beat's 14th cousin, three times removed, with their most recent ancestors being Sir John de Guilford <laughs> of Halden and Alice Guilford, born Alice Waller. Number six, Teddy Roosevelt, Mr. Beat's eighth cousin, five times removed, no. with their most recent ancestors being Cornelis Sigurtsi Van Egmont, uh, originally Van Vorthoot, and Brechtie Van Egmond, number five, Dwight Eisenhower, who I originally wow. saw as Mr. Beat's fifth cousin, three times removed, but because this was a line which I was researching further, I was able to find out Jeannie wasn't originally correct. Ooh. So I was able to correct it. Mm. And when it was corrected, oh, I then found that Dwight Eisenhower was Mr. Beat's fifth cousin uh. four times removed, with their most recent ancestor being Peter Struble and Anna Katrina Struble, born Whoop, originally both from Germany. This is the... So is this the closest one? I... 
think so, which kind of makes more sense because it doesn't um, four times removed. That's yeah. Because of um, you know, the area and that's, um, but um what do you think about the those matches? Well, uh, relations. I mean the Thanks more I'm time. learning about this, the more I realize we're probably related to so many people that we didn't yeah. really realize, including yeah. me and you. <laughs> the only <laughs> president I found related to Mr. Beat through his father's side, and this hmm. is also Mr. Beat's closest oh. related oh, okay. president. So how about so now that? We know any so Eisenhower um, is basically family, okay? That's... Okay. That was uh, well, all the other ones were through your mother's side. Is that yeah? Right? He was the only one through the father's side. Yeah, the time he's saying good stuff about Eisenhower, he obviously has a serious bias. <laughs> Number four, Thomas Jefferson, yeah. Mr. Beat's 11th cousin, four times Jefferson. removed, with their most recent yeah. ancestors being William de Mainwaring and Margaret Warren of Itefield. Oh, okay. Oh, same, okay. Number same three, common Calvin Coolidge, Coolidge. Mr. tenth cousin once removed, with their most recent ancestors being John Whitcomb the second and Francis Whitcomb Cogan. Number two, mm -hmm. Grover Cleveland, Mr. Beat's sixth cousin, six times oh, removed, wow. with their most recent ancestors being Ensign Thomas Lee the second and Mara Griswold, born Mara De Wolf. And Mr. Beat's favorite president, George Washington, his 11th cousin, six times removed, wow. with their most recent ancestors being Sir Reynold de Grey II, third Baron Grey de Ruthen, and Lady Margaret Baroness Grey de Ross, Baroness Grey de Ruthen. Now I do this all okay. the time, but I well, apologize for absolutely yeah. butchering a ton. You, now you need... Uh, what what was Washington? What what was he? What was it, your his... eleventh cousin? You need that on a T-shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's um, that's all closer than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, there's more than that, huh? That like pretty much my entire top ten list. I'm I'm. A, I mean, I'm wondering if this is the same for all the presidents or all. I mean, we we looked at the other historical figures and. No connection to uh, Chief Joseph or yeah. Harriet Tubman. I mean, that's a bit more understandable. Oh, you're wondering if he just looked up your top 10. Is that what? Yeah, it? yeah. So I'm curious yeah. if uh, I'm going to explore yeah. this further. None of those names, but I try my hardest. So give me a break. <laughs> so that's going to do too. it for this episode. Okay. I know it was a long one. We went into a lot. So uh, thank you for for sticking around folks um that was the third episode there are at least three more probably four um depending on how it goes with his research and i'm going to see if he wants to join us now yeah he is here so the man himself oh hi hello everybody <laughs> um let me all right thank you for joining us here uh uh that was the seemed like uh exhausting work on your end yeah uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The uh, honestly, the hardest part about it was both of my dogs caught Gerardia right in the middle of all that. So that's why the third episode that was about two days after at like two a.m. I had to drive one of my dogs to the emergency room. Aww. So I probably, I, I think you might have mentioned it. I think you're like he looks pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just look tired, and I know that yeah. looks very well. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I mean. It's so much fun doing this. And with your tree, like I said, being so expansive, easy to build out, and then having so many DNA matches, it was it's always that's like the perfect thing that we like to do because you can keep building it and building it no matter which way you go. There's all sorts of stuff to look into. I do have a question right off the bat, and that is like say we were to connect like somebody watching this right now, somebody in the chat, or you know, yeah. uh, do you think I'd get similar results to like the, the presidents and Mark it, Twain. And... It depends on their ancestry. So you actually weren't related to all of the presidents. Cause I know you were oh. kind of uh, thinking about that. Uh, you weren't related to some of them. Um, funny enough. I don't know. Cypher's in the chat. You were not related to Wilson. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, you were not. In fact, the closest <laughs> tangential relationship you had was through Wilson's wife. 
Okay. But it was like, you know, it was one of those crazy space balls relations. Mm -hmm. You also were not related to Donald Trump. You were not <laughs> related to, I'd have to look into some. One of the things that I want to offer um, to everyone in the chat, at some point, I'm going to allow people to say any historical figures you want. And while I'm on here live, I'll be able to pull up yeah. and see how Mr. Beat is related to whoever. So if we want to look into oh. any of the other presidents not mentioned. Um, so this includes you as well, Matt and Shannon, both of you. If you have anyone that you're interested in, like, how is there a connection? I'll look that up right now. So, Well, on uh, one of your tweets, you had mentioned Nixon as an option. What was, what yes. was that? Okay, let's pull up Nixon. Now, I think there was a connection with Nixon. I did notice, I want to say, out of your top 10 least favorite presidents, I believe three of them weren't related. Oh. Wilson was one of them. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's like you had this bias and you didn't even realize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the Kansas connection with Eisenhower anyway. Like, I just yeah. grew up learning about him. And yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people were guessing in some of the polls I put out uh, Eisenhower. And I think even someone did a super chat saying that they were pretty sure they're calling it now. It's Ike. Yeah, um, someone did mention that in the chat. Yeah, uh, so, okay, we, okay, we got we got Beethoven. Okay. Uh, oh, okay well, oh, wait, wait, wait. So, so we, already we got a have list Nixon. Okay, and Nixon is your eighth cousin twice removed. Okay. So you so, are related to Nixon. All yeah, right, yeah. we had Beethoven. <laughs> Played a lot of Beethoven growing up. <laughs> Eight years of piano lessons. We're not doing Adolf Hitler. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody put Stalin as well. All right, it is loading now for Beethoven. It usually takes just about a like a half a minute or two for it to load. Oh, okay. So, uh, I think the other one that we have to do is a lot of people are saying uh, the same name. Uh, oh, well, no. I saw people... someone put C.S. Lewis. George <laughs> Washington put C.S. Lewis. Someone put P.T. Barnum, Matt. Oh, P.T. Barnum, uh, fun story. You want to tell them, uh, Shannon, how you're related to P.T. Oh, Barnum? It, it, it's one of those, you know, the same way you're related to the presidents, but I, I don't know. It's uh, through the, my grandmother on my dad's side. Um, yeah. Put PT Barnum in there. Cause then if you're related to PT Barnum, then we're avoiding the obvious. <laughs> Maybe how we're, how yeah. we're connected, Matt. We'll do that off the air. Uh... Okay. <laughs> you're very concerned about that too. No, not really. I'm pretty sure it's fine. If, if it is, it's going to be distant. I'm sure. Like I said, Eleanor Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt were fifth cousins once removed. So yeah, uh, Eugene Debs maybe would be a fun one. Because, uh, did you ever get um, Beethoven hasn't loaded yet, so that one um, might be, be not uh, blood related. But I'm just getting to Phineas Barnum. <laughs> Phineas yeah, Taylor first, Barnum. I always forget that his first name. <laughs> yeah. So while I'm loading those, are there any other questions that you all have for me? I don't want to give too much away because I know there's more to come. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the thing that those maps were really cool, or the where they called the where the painted. What do they call that? The, the uh, uh, you're talking about the family tree or the DNA painter. The DNA painter. That was probably yeah. my favorite part. Yeah. The, uh, it's just kind of cool to see it visually in that way. And, um, yeah. Are you talking about the fan one that fanned out? Yeah. You're talk oh, you're talking about that. So like when it was the country of births and yeah. the century. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, it's, yeah, it's all been Europe and the United States. Uh, so nothing to, uh, but nothing, uh, I guess, too surprising yet for what you found. Yeah, you have what I like to call the American mutt typical type of tree. Yeah. Where you have some deep ancestral American roots, which trace back to 
early years in the colonies. You also have some more recent immigration with like your German ancestry. You have a little bit of Irish thrown in there. You've got Russian thrown in there. So you, you come from multiple different uh, migration waves to the U S mm -hmm. so it, 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 which makes it really interesting too, because then as you climb up all of a sudden you get back one generation and then like, you know, Marianne Creighton, all of a sudden this Irish ancestor pops out. Mm -hmm. You didn't really expect it because she was in a sea of, you know, Schmitz and Tennyson's and other, yeah. sort of, you know, German sounding type names um, who were all living in Russia. So <laughs> yeah, I, the, actually, Russia threw me off. I wasn't expecting that. That was one of the ones. That... Yeah, yeah, that one that one was a little surprising when I found it, but it's an interesting story. I don't know if I'll end up getting to go into it for an episode. Um, but at the very least, I will probably tell you about it in the, you know, I'm going to send a ton of stuff to you that unfortunately won't be aired. Um, some of it, obviously, for privacy reasons, some of it yeah. for this time. Um, but I can tell you, it's going to be likely, I think I'll end up doing seven episodes just because I have so much. Wow. And I've worked with, I think I mentioned to the, this to you before we started, but um I've been working with different people around the country at different historical societies. And a lot of that stuff is going to be showing up in the next few episodes. So it's okay. going to be really diving in deep uh, to some really, really fun stuff. Um, I do have your relations to Beethoven and P.T. Barnum. Okay. So Beethoven is not a blood relation, but he is your second cousin, twice removes, wife's grandmother's ex-husband's ex-partner's second cousin, twice removes, husband's brother's wife's grandfather's wife's mother's husband's brother. Spaceballs. <laughs> so yeah. P.T. <laughs> Barnum is your 10th cousin, six oh. times removed. <laughs> Okay. So yeah. Yeah. On your mom's side, the Whitcomb family is what we often refer to as a gateway family. So it's basically once you reach this Whoa. certain family, then you're sort of connected to like everybody, yeah. mostly yeah. because wow. it's connected to the royal tree or, you know, any sort of well known figure type of trees. Um, what about Genghis Khan? <laughs> is he let's one see. I don't I actually don't know if we have any sort of uh family tree for him on Genie, but there's a lot Jeannie of speculation had... about, about him, about how so many people are related to him. Yeah, the I think there, I wouldn't know for sure, but I think I had read somewhere that they suspect that basically anyone with Asian ancestry can trace to Genghis Khan. But I don't know if that's actually true or not, because there's a lot of stuff that people yeah. say. Like, like there's a I think there's a thing of, a few years back that you might have seen where they said that every single president was related to every single other president. Yeah. And while most of them are not all of them are. So, yeah, I think that says more about an entire society versus like. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess I am a royalty now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are. <laughs> All right, so I, I don't think this is true, but supposedly Genghis Khan is your 21st great uncle's daughter's husband's half-sister's husband's great uncle. So kind of a five degrees of Kevin Bacon-like yeah. <laughs> relationship. Yeah, so. well, there's a lot of suggestions in the chat I, I know it takes a while though so <laughs> i just saw uh, someone ask for joe exotic I, yeah. I i don't think he's on the uh world family tree <laughs> or pewdiepie yeah actually mr beast would be funny his real name yeah. is jimmy donaldson yeah you know i actually have a list of people i really hope to have on this series and he's one of those people especially oh. because i'm in raleigh yeah. which is where he's in as well Oh, that's so whenever right. I watch his videos, it's always like, I know that place. I know where that is. And it's like, you almost want to just hang out downtown Raleigh, just kind of waiting for Mr. Beast to show up. Wow. And give you money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it is, you know, it's been a <laughs> double edged sword with him. Like I, cause I, I think a lot of people stumble on my channel thinking that I'm him at first and yeah. some of them stick around, but mm -hmm. then it is, it does get annoying. Like I, I literally do get people asking me for money like all the time. 
thinking that I'm him. So. Messages and emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, I don't have his tree, unfortunately. I do hope to one day, but I do know that you are related to the Paul brothers. I did look that up already. So oh, you're related wow. to, to Jake Paul and Logan Paul. So you can uh, <laughs> yeah claim, claim that what is it the low Paul gang is that that's what it's called? <laughs> is that, yeah. There we go. Just knock Amy, on the what door. about a fame uh, uh, favorite band or? There music. must be some. It 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 all depends on if someone's been put into the mm -hmm. world family tree. But if you can think of anything, I know you're into music, so you listen to a lot of stuff that there probably wouldn't be anyone putting that information. <laughs> family tree talk about, um tonight in the car uh <laughs> like the beatles or i don't know oh yeah someone just said oh. kurt, um, cobain. Kurt, kurt cobain kurt cobain that would be a good okay, one let's yeah kurt cobain yeah i uh, just said, uh ben folds and oh ben folds is who we were talking oh about. yeah yeah i uh um, a lot of the music I listen to is pretty obscure. I saw Group Love last night. Sh uh, shout out to that. That's a great band. And actually, that brings me back to uh, a question someone said at one point. My intro, is that from my own band? And it is. Yes, I thought that was. Uh, what is your band called, by the way? Let's give them some promotion. Yeah, well, I, I'm not in the band anymore. It's actually oh. the end of the band was kind of the um, fuel for youtube and going full-time with actual genealogy as a career because oh, okay. before before that it was literally i was it was all about the band and i was also i worked as a booking agent and a tour manager so i was just wow. like 24 7 into that but i loved genealogy as a hobby and then my band our last night from a tour we were on stage and our guitarist and our drummer got into a fight on stage and our band broke up after that. And then there was a genealogy conference in town like a week later when we were supposed to be back on the road. So I was like, well, I'm not going on the road. I might as well get, wow. you know, go to a genealogy conference. And then it was like, oh, man, I should do a YouTube channel on this stuff. <laughs> it was meant to be. Uh, we, have a, we have a super chat. Uh, Sunflower Socialist. Uh, thanks again. Uh, he really wants to see my connection to Eugene V. Debs, who is his. Okay. He's a big fan of Debs and uh, probably could tell you anything you would ever want to know about Debs. So, Okay. Well, the first thing I should say, Kurt Cobain is your 11th cousin once removed. Once again, through that Whitcomb line. Okay. 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 Yeah. Man, that's the, the that's, gateway for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's why with uh, with Eisenhower it was really cool being that he was your closest and the only one that I could find through your father's side. Yeah, that that was that special. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, uh, I, I it's weird because I did have suspicions myself that he was the one I was closest to. Just ge geographically, I know that doesn't yeah. necessarily make sense, but because everyone's moving around all the time over the past yeah. <laughs> hundred years, but. Casey really wants John Cena. <laughs> John Cena! He busted the door. How also, it's all The Rock. The Rock, uh, okay. Well, we, we, got it. we have to do Eugene Debs, and we might have to wrap it yeah, up. He's, we got to get up early tomorrow. He's pulling up right now. So, um, while that's pulling up, one thing I, I uh, figured I'd mention, too, you mentioned uh, Matt from Useful Charts being your cousin. And um, yeah. he will actually be the subject of a future season. Awesome. I have uh, I have three seasons already set up. I don't think I want to re uh, reveal who the others are yet, um, especially because I haven't actually started working on anything uh, for them, although I have for Matt, which is uh, why I can kind of say something real quick mm -hmm. about it. Um, you bur were both related, and it was also through that Whitcomb line. <laughs> um, and obviously, uh, Governor Eugene Whitcomb, that's how you're related to him as well. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Which he was, he was uh, now one of my favorite all time governors. Um. And he, <laughs> uh, let's just say I can't say much else because it'll be spoilers for the next episode. 
Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. Understandable. so, all right. So Eugene V. Debs is your third cousin, eight times removes husband's second great nephew's wife's brother. Okay. So <laughs> basically you're related through his wife. Okay. Or well, okay. you're tangentially related through his wife. So yeah. <laughs> I said Aaron Burr. <laughs> Okay. No Aaron Burr. No. No Aaron Burr. You got to say, you know. We'll do one more, but I want it to be a really good one. Actually, okay, I'll let you John, choose the last one. Can we do John Cena? I kind of. Okay, yeah, let's do John it. Cena. Let's see. Weird Al. Weird Al. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping it up with John Cena. Um, while you're searching that, um, everybody go subscribe to Genie Blogger. Um, maybe tell them how to spell it. Oh, it's behind you. G yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> from my company, Genie Vlogger DNA Labs. And if anyone, I know there's probably people who are like, "What crimes has he worked on? What what cold cases?" Ooh. If you just Google DNA Labs International, and then cold cases, a whole ton of stuff will come up. Uh, my name is not always mentioned. Um, that's not really a big focal point of those articles, but if you just Google that, you'll see a whole lot of the stuff that we that I've worked on. Okay, so John Cena is your twelfth cousin once removed. That's it. That's it. There we go. Not bad. Not <laughs> yeah, bad. So you you, uh, you are related to him, and once again, it's through that Whitcomb line. So. <laughs> Well, so that, that really would come is important, but it I will say video we, will, about Whitcomb. we will be talking a lot about the Whitcomb family in both your season, and we will also be talking about it in Matt from Useful Chart season as well. Oh, um, okay. just to give a kind of a spoiler, let's just say you both come from the same family that represent two different sides of an idea. And oh. that's why you both <laughs> have, uh, um, I don't know, just different lives. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> our destinies. So same family, two different sides of an idea. Uh, Let okay. Figure out what that might mean. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, there will be a part two. So everyone watching, uh, this will probably be in about three to, well, probably about four weeks a month Yeah, um, because you're releasing every episode on, on Wednesday, right? Yes. Every episode I'm releasing on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I, it should be, should be seven episodes. I'm pretty sure. Awesome. Okay. Well, looking forward to the rest of it. And you've done a great job so far. I'm just impressed with the thoroughness and uh, also like breaking it down in a way that we can understand. Cause a lot of this is like, uh, you know, it's a different language sometimes when you mm -hmm. dig deep into the weeds of certain fields, most yeah. fields. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> you, it, uh, you can join us again next time, but otherwise, um, uh, Everybody watching, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for all the super chats. I'm, I have a new video coming out tomorrow morning myself. Uh, it's Maine and Louisiana compared, so check that out. And, uh, oh, maybe next time we'll also see how I'm connected to uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Um, so I always, end up, I always end the live stream with, like, saying that Jeffrey F F Epstein didn't kill himself <laughs> or something like that. All right, bye-bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.